If you want that really good quality, the best, most consistent snow and terrain, you go to the interior. People are coming to the Powder Highway for that specific deep powder. Our reputation is for quality snow and you can have these amazing experiences. And those experiences are becoming more challenging. That's the thing that, that's going to happen to, to the Powder Highway. There's going to be a large number of rain events. Seasons are going to be shortening. I've been a skier my whole life. I've spent 40 plus years on snow on the West Coast. The one consistent thing that I've seen is that it's just getting weird. The Powder Highway is a 1,000 kilometer loop through BC's Kootenai Rockies and interior. Dotted with eight world-class ski resorts, over 20 backcountry lodges, and dozens of heli and cat skiing operations. In fact, it's the largest concentration of ski services in the world. And for good reason, the powder here is legendary. I think the powder highway is, is a skier's journey. You know, it's like, it's not high-end tourism, it's not uh, fancy resorts and five-star dinners. It's it's for skiers. It's for people that want good snow and a cool experience and a, and a real bit of BC that's in a way getting harder to find. And so the Kootenays in that, that region, there's, there's a vibe there that's, that's pretty cool. But what happens to that vibe if the powder of Powder Highway disappears? Ski regions across Canada and the world are being threatened by a changing climate. These disturbing pictures from Europe around New Year's 2023 showed green grass where snow should be at some ski resorts, limiting access and forcing some to close entirely. Some studies have even suggested that only resorts above 2,500 meters will be operational by the end of the century. And the ski resorts that lie in Powder Highway are no exception. Back in the 2014-2015 ski season, BC saw one of their worst winters on record. Even places like Fernie was seeing green grass on the slopes, and some resorts were forced to end their season early. The ski industry was hit hard. Many called it a wacky year, an anomaly. But according to researchers from the University of British Columbia, that might not be entirely true. The average condition in 2050 will be like that really bad winter that I'm talking about 2014, 2015. That'll be the average. So if that's the average, 50% uh, of the years are even warmer than that, right? Michael Pedroni and his team have been using spatially interpolated climate data generated by a software database to get a clearer picture of what snow forecasts will look like for BC ski resorts in the future. So, so the main variables we were looking at was temperature, precipitation in the form of snow, and, and rainfall because, you know, essentially as it warms up, we're treating it as less snow, more rain. And then we did some modeling of uh, the length of the ski season. They mapped out their findings for best and worst case scenario. Best case, an increase of about 2.5 degrees Celsius. Worst case, an increase of about 4.5. The research found that by 2085 in a worst case scenario, interior resorts will see a decrease in snowfall somewhere between 26 to 38%. And this will lead to a shorter season, losing anywhere between 48 to 77 days. I think that's what the ski resorts have to worry about, is having a couple bad years in a row that really um, influence their pocketbook, right? And while the researchers say it will be a gradual decline, eventually even the most northern resorts along Powder Highway will start to see changes. Changes that skiers like Mike are already starting to notice. The, the things that we used to come to rely on, the, the knowns, are, are becoming strange. In the last decade, we've seen several mountains uh, in the coast range here that, that just sections of them just crumble and fall off. And that's, uh, that's also a huge concern. The irony is that the resorts that are famous for their powder are also part of the threat that could destroy it. Energy used to run chairlifts and gondolas, fossil fuel hungry snow machines that are becoming more necessary across BC as winters change, and then of course all the skiers that travel from around the world to experience the famous Powder Highway. But alas, all hope is not lost. Many of the towns and resorts in this area realize that in order to protect Powder Highway, they need to start making changes. In Fernie, they're dealing with the transportation issue by installing more electric vehicle charging stations. While in Kimberley, they've turned an old mine into a solar panel facility that has the capability to power hundreds of homes. I had a chance to test out the famous powder, visit the cozy ski towns, and find out how some of these places are carving new ways to fight climate change. I think there's a big awareness for global warming and lowering the carbon footprint. I think Kimberley's a leader in that as a city, as a community. They're always looking at ways that we can do small things to make it better. Welcome to Kimberley, BC. Population around 8,000. A family-friendly city located in the beautiful Purcell mountain range, and maybe the best kept secret along the Powder Highway. 
On weekends, you can find young and old and whole families on the mountain. Oh, and as I found out from just about everyone, it's the sunniest place in BC. Being one of the sunniest places in BC means it's the perfect spot for those cloudless, sunny bluebird days at what is known as the sunniest ski resort in BC. But it also makes it the perfect place for something else, solar panels. From the top of the ski hill, you can see the outline of over 4,000 solar cell modules that make up the Kimberley Sun Mine, BC's largest solar farm. But why Sun Mine, you might ask? Well, before this land was turned into an innovative renewable energy source, it was actually quite the opposite. The Solver Mine was discovered in 1892. It ran for 109 years. And it was the largest lead and zinc producer in the world at one time. So you can imagine that for a, you know, a small town, that puts you on the map. For a century, the Sullivan Mine sourced lead, zinc, and silver. It was the heartbeat of the town, and even the ski hill that people know and love today used to be part of the mine. At its peak, it employed about a thousand people per year and created a booming town. They needed workers and they needed amenities for workers. And that included starting their own uh, departmental store, having a dairy, building recreation halls. But in 2001, the mine and operations were shut down and the city was left with a south facing slope in a place that sees 300 days of sunshine annually. And so the Sun Mine was born, a partnership between the city, EcoSmart and Tech Resources Limited transforming one of the largest mines in Canada to one of the largest solar farms. Kimberley is an in innovative town and as these technologies are becoming more prevalent and more available, then Kimberley as a, as a community decided to uh, pursue construction of this facility. The Sun Mine would also become the first solar project in BC to sell power to the BC Hydro Grid, enough energy to power about 250 homes. Bitec, who bought the facility from the city, says they're exploring expansion and have enough land to produce 200 megawatts in the future. That's enough to power all of Kimberley. I had a chance to walk through the 96 panels and see them in action, moving both vertically and horizontally to maximize exposure, tracking the sun from dawn until dusk. And it's hard not to be inspired by the work that's being done here. If you drove around town, <laughs> you'd see that even people that have bought houses and done renos, a lot of them have solar panels. You know, someone else is doing it on a big scale, so it must be worthwhile. And the team here is hopeful that the project will inspire people beyond Kimberley's borders. As mines are, are closing, there's always uh, the need to look for what the end land use should be and, and look for great alternative uses uh, of that land. Nowadays, the heartbeat of Kimberley is a ski hill. And the community hopes that by creating renewable energy and reducing their carbon emissions, they can keep that heart beating for generations to come. We're here and we love it because of the amazing winter environment, the skiing, the skating, but it is also under threat with a changing climate. And so there are a few um, initiatives that communities really have to be taking. Welcome to Fernie, BC. The locals here describe it as an authentic grassroots town, home to just about 5,000 people. But in the winter months, the population here doubles and visitors skyrocket to more than 300,000, thanks to something that has become known as the Fernie Factor. The epic snow that we get here in Fernie is definitely part of the reason that we have such a great reputation. We have a little tiny microclimate that surrounds our ski area due to our geographic location in the front ranges of the Rocky Mountains, so that when the storms approaching from the coast first hit the Rocky Mountains, they dump their load of moisture here, right here on Fernie. The copious amounts of snow that gets dumped here has become so famous that the town even has a 20 centimeter rule. Businesses get to shut their doors until noon so residents can hit the slopes on days with that much new snow. But those big powder days might be fewer and farther between, as Fernie's slowly starting to see the impacts of climate change. In 2014, like many other ski resorts across BC, Fernie was the victim of a low snowpack year, and at times there were even green patches under the chairlift. But that year wasn't a fluke. Researchers say that there will be more seasons with less snow in the future as human activity continues to warm the planet. In fact, a team at UBC predicts that the year we saw in 2014 will be the average by 2050. One way the town is trying to preserve the ski conditions is by lessening the impact of their many visitors. They hope that they can keep Fernie's electric energy by literally electrifying the region. We've got nine new level two charging stations that um, have just recently been installed. And what 
that does is supports not just local residents to transition to electric vehicles, but also to encourage electric vehicle tourism. Because the Powder Highway is made up of rural small towns and hundreds of kilometers of road in between them, the idea of exploring the region in an EV was once a pipe dream. That is until Accelerate Kootenays was born in 2018. One of the first rural electric vehicle, well, the first rural electric vehicle network in Canada that was community driven uh, did originate here in the Kootenays. Folks living in some of the urban centers that travel to recreate in our region, they can now consider adopting an EV in the urban context knowing that they'll be able to reliably get across the Powder Highway, get to our um, incredible communities and access those recreational resources. The program has already helped connect over 1,800 kilometers of highway, and they saw a 52% increase in use from 2018 to 2019. Now, the regional districts have launched Accelerate Kootenays 2.0, where they plan to add 98 charging stations and are offering businesses several financial incentives, like matching half the cost of installation. That's one way to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions on the roads. But back on the mountain in Fernie, they're thinking more outside the box when it comes to renewable energy. We're looking at electric snowmobiles. Already they've introduced high efficiency snowcats that are reducing emissions. And the electric snowmobiles created by Quebec-based company Taiga Motors will take things a step further. Fernie wants to let the world know that they're electric friendly. And they're trying to do their part to protect that famous fluffy Fernie snow.